Your SpaceX Starlink internet is not getting faster until this happens. Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Thank you so much once again joining me for Tea Time. Today we have a little bit of fireside. That smokiness, guys. The goodness. I hope you're joining me with your cup of tea, maybe a cup of coffee, hanging out, talking tech, talking photo, talking video. Today is a tech day. We're going to be talking about what does SpaceX Starlink need to do? What it needs to happen right now for Starlink to go faster? And I'm going to get into that before the end of this video. I was reading an interesting article over on PC Magazine about finally SpaceX Starlink has hit that 4,000 satellite mark. It is a big milestone for Starlink. So I want to get into this article and then give you my thoughts and then also how this is going to actually increase speeds. What is it that they're going to need to do? And I'm going to answer a couple of your questions too that came to us on the last video in the comment area. Once again, if you have any questions in the comment area, put those questions in there and I will try to answer them either in the comments or live, kind of, record it like we're doing right now. Also, if you want to hang out with me and my wife live tonight, you can do so. It is Friday night. Usually we'll do about an 8 o'clock or 9, right around there, usually 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Come hang out with us. Talk about whatever you want to talk about. We're going to be talking about a bunch of different topics today. We're going to obviously talk about Starlink, maybe some other things about off-grid, maybe satellite stuff, maybe battery, all kinds of things. So definitely join us this evening. Anyways, as I always say, if you enjoy this content, even in the least, throw it a thumbs up. That'll be very helpful. Don't forget to subscribe if you're not. And if you are subscribed, click this little button over here so when I go live or when a new video comes out, you will be notified of it immediately. And don't forget, during the entire month of May, we will be doing the 3,000 push-up challenge benefiting the St. Jude Children's Research Hospital. So hit donate down below if you'd like to contribute. 100% of those donations goes to St. Jude. 100%. Also, if you're looking for a VPN or just simply faster internet speeds or reliability like me, especially when we go live, we've been using something called Speedify. And it's working out really good. Matter of fact, you can see it live tonight. So you can see that it actually does work. It works fantastic. And it basically bonds multiple connections together and gives you a VPN at the same time. The nice folks over there at Speedify gave me a promo code. It is Christina. If you check out over there on Speedify.com, use Christina. you're going to get 20% off additional what they have currently. I think they have a big summer discount going on right now. Go check that out. If you just want to click on a link down below, there'll be a link, which is jchristina.com forward slash speed, and you're going to get the 20% off automatically. Anyways, let's get into this article. I love this. This is some really good stuff. As the capacity of the first generation Starlink console Constellation reaches its limit, SpaceX also signals that it's preparing numerous launches for second generation network. SpaceX Starlink satellite internet system has crossed a notable milestone by reaching over 4,000 satellites in orbit. The company today launched another 56 Starlink satellites into space, bringing the total number of Starlink satellites in orbit to 4,023, according to astronomer Jonathan McDowell. More satellites are good news for Starlink users when network congestion continues to plague the satellite internet system. Starlink has become so popular that its capacity has been stretched, particularly in the U.S., which can cause speeds to slow. The milestone also shows SpaceX has completed most of its first-generation Starlink network in four years, after an initial launch in 2019. According to McDowell, SpaceX since launched 4,340 Starlink satellites, though over 300 of them have been deorbited due to system failure. Not too bad. 300 out of 4,300. I'll take that. In December, SpaceX secured an FCC license to operate up to 7,500 satellites in the second generation constellation. The company's goal is to build the network through Starlink launches that could take place every week to every few days. In recent days, SpaceX has signaled it's preparing to meet that launch cadence. The company has applied for FCC licenses related to over a dozen Starlink satellite launches that could be scheduled 
scheduled to as soon as this month. However, the growing size of Starlink is also stirring up concerns with astronomers and environmental groups who are worried that the satellite constellations risk generating light pollution in the night sky. Obviously, astronomers and space or astrophotographers are not going to like the light pollution, right? Makes sense. Now, remember, there's been a lot of hurdles that SpaceX Starlink has had to overcome over the last couple of months, one of which was from Dish Network. Now, in a previous article, they talked about that Dish Network filing and said something like this. In early December, the FCC gave conditional approval for the second generation network, but at a much smaller scale, 7,500 satellites instead of the SpaceX's requested 29,988. However, Dish Network is opposing the FCC order over concerns that the second generation network will disrupt access to Dish's satellite TV business. It says, quote, the order leaves millions of families receiving satellite television service from Dish in the same frequency vulnerable to interference. Now, that frequency was the 12 gigahertz frequency, and they've been fighting back and forth Dish Network as well as Viasat and SpaceX Starlink for that 12 gigahertz spectrum. It continues, it is unlawful and should be set aside for several reasons, the company said in the court filing. The lawsuit is one of several regulatory battles DISH has been fighting with SpaceX as the company looks to gain access to radio spectrum for their respective satellite services. Another such regulatory battle was a lawsuit filed by DISH Network and Viasat seeking the FCC not to permit Starlink satellites to operate in lower orbit. Now, just a few days ago, SpaceX prevailed over Viasat and Dish Network, stating this, a U.S. appeals court has rejected the lawsuit from Dish Network and Viasat that tried to reverse the FCC decision to permit SpaceX to operate Starlink satellites at lower orbits. So why are lower orbits so important, so valuable, let's say? Well, a satellite that's in lower orbit means that it can actually transmit faster data as well as provide lower latency. Why? Because it is closer. Now, there is a caveat to that, a downside, a pitfall, and that pitfall is gravity. So when you're going around the Earth at a lower orbit, there's going to be more drag, more gravity. Hence, the satellite's going to be able to stay in orbit for a shorter period of time. Well, obviously, SpaceX doesn't care because they will just send more up there when these lower orbiting satellites deorbit and burn up in the atmosphere. So they really don't care. They want faster speeds and they want lower latency. And that is one of the ways that they're going to get it. Now, like I said earlier, there was a couple of questions that I got from you guys. And one of the questions said something like this, is SpaceX launching all variants of satellites, meaning version 1.0s, 1.5s, and the 2.0 minis? Another question that I got was kind of similar, and it said, are only SpaceX Starlink satellite version 2.0 minis currently being launched? So the answer to all this is summed up in this wonderful astronomer, once again, this Jonathan McDowell, and he put together this amazing table. This table is awesome. I'm going to throw it up on the screen for you. You guys can take a snapshot of it if you want. Once again, full credit to Jonathan. This is great. This shows the satellite version, what group it is in, as well as where it's orbiting, the height that it's orbiting, how many of them have launched of each one how many are in orbit and how many are actually working and operational. This is great information. Now, as you can see, group one, SpaceX Starlink launched about 1,600 of them and there's currently about 1,400 in operation. Not bad, but look at the group two, group three, group four, and group five. Those are all version 1.5s. Now, what's the difference? Version 1.5s have satellite interconnected lasers, right? I think they're called ILS or IS or something like that. They are lasers that connect the satellites together so that they do not have to move data out of low Earth orbit. They don't have to go back to the ground station, back to another satellite, back to a ground station to hopscotch throughout the planet. They can basically send the data from satellite to satellite to satellite throughout the entire globe at the speed of light in a vacuum. So let's just call it very 
quickly. We can see right around, let's call it 18, 1900 of the version 1.5s. That is the reason why a lot of the planet is opening up. That is the reason why we're seeing less waiting lists, even in the United States. There is now a portion of the United States that has a waiting list and an entire other side, an entire half, let's say, of the United States that is wide open. So that amount of territory that does have a waiting list is getting smaller and smaller and smaller, and that is due to the version 1.5s. Now, how is the system going to get faster? The answer to that is the version 2.0 minis and the version 2.0s eventually. Remember, SpaceX will not be able to launch the full-size version 2s until Starship actually gets into orbit. It doesn't blow up. Right? So for right now, we can only launch the version 2.0 minis. And instead of being able to house in that top cone or that fairing 50, 56, let's say, that they can of the version 1.5s, they can only hold 21 at a time. And as you can see here in this table, they have launched 42 satellites so far that are version 2.0 minis, and two of them blew up. We talked about that in a previous video. They deorbited because there was problems. I was speculating it's a software problem, but if it was a hardware problem, they would all deorbit. Obviously, they didn't all deorbit because we can see 40 of them are currently working. Now, when they say working means that they are up there in LEO, but as you can see on the column that says operational, there is zero version 2.0 minis in operation. Now, remember, 2.0 minis is the key to speed also, it is the key to the amount of capacity that the entire system can handle because the version 2.0 minis supposedly have a capacity of 4x over the 1.5s, 4x. So currently we have a million customers on SpaceX Starlink. That means they'll be able to handle 4 million customers once we see more of these 2.0 minis actually operational, as well as we will see faster speeds. Now, just today in the community tab, I put my speed, what I got today. Matter of fact, I'll put it up on the screen right now so you can see it right around here. So I was getting 163.5 down and 14.54 up. That is really good speed. Now, bear in mind, that is not bonded together using Speedify, where we have T-Mobile and Starlink together. No, that is just Starlink. So seeing 163.5 and 14.5 up, that is exciting. That is great because I want to see over that 100 threshold because we talked about this in our last video. I don't want to see a hard throttle at that 100 mark. And according to the lingo, the legal ease, the verbiage that is in their fair use policy and all the rest of the stuff that we went over in our last video. Maybe you can take a look at it over here. Well, it felt like they were going to put a hard throttle at that 100 megabits down. Once again, it doesn't look like that it's happening yet. Let's hope that it doesn't. I want you to help the community down below. If you have SpaceX Starlink, put your current speed as of today. It is Cinco de Mayo. As of today, put down there a beer maybe and your speed. Put the speed, how much your down speed is, how much is your upload speed, and then also where are you located. That would be great for the entire community to do so we can see how we are doing a comparison to everyone else. Are we on par? Are we slower? Are we faster? Where are we? Anyways, I hope you found this interesting. I know I have. If you want more Starlink coverage, I put together a playlist. Maybe I'll stick a link right here. Take a look at that playlist. There's over 140 videos, just Starlink, helpful how-tos, tips, tricks, what to do, what not to do, what to buy, what not to buy, and most importantly, why. That's what's in all those videos, the why. So let me finalize with this. Head over to my website, jchristina.com, where you can find all the photography tools I've invented for you and me over the years, and hopefully there's something there that you might like. And if there is, please pick it up and support me and my family. That's it, guys. I'm out of here for another vlog. Many blessings to you and your family. Stay safe, stay healthy, and we'll see you in the next one. Love you all. Bye.